State Representative Janine Nodder, and you're watching Chatting with Janine. This is the fourth show on Alzheimer's, and I again have Representative Maureen Mooney here as a co-host and the Regional director, director for the Alzheimer's Association, Melissa Grenier. Welcome, ladies. Thank Always you. a pleasure to be back on your show, Janine. Yeah, I know we the last show ended five minutes ago, but we have changed the background to to purple. It's not quite the same color purple as the uh, tablecloth that Maureen provided, um, but it reminds me of the two crayons in a box, and I always had a hard time choosing between <laughs> which shade of purple. So. You're gonna pick, yeah. <laughs> Can that be part of a, a test? You know, using um, crayons. I'm sure it could be. Mm -hmm. um, Dis, you know, distinguishing between colors very well in the future could be. So just a quick recap again, uh, you, we first had the show on the longest day in yep. Merrimack. We have hot dog days um, by, that was started by Bob Bergen, a, a longtime resident of Merrimack. Then we talked about the different types of Alzheimer's and the show we just finished taping was about uh, research. Now we're going to talk about resources and care. I guess we can start with behavioral issues. Yeah, we certainly can, yeah. Uh, I think one of the uh, most difficult aspects of Alzheimer's has to do with dementia-related behaviors, which can be really tough to not only understand, but to manage on a day-to-day -day basis sure. for caregivers and care partners. Uh, so one of those um, has to do with sundowning, um, which you've, you've uh, mentioned. I know about a, that. <laughs> a close family member um, is impacted by sundowning, and sundowning has to do with an increase in um, behaviors, things like anxiety, disorientation, confusion. They get feisty in the evening. They get extra feisty um, when the sun starts going down. Sure. So yeah. this time of year, when the nights are longer, sundowning can happen, say, 6, 7 o'clock. But in the winter time, mm -hmm. you know, people, people can start sundowning and having those agitated behaviors at 3, 4 o'clock because it's getting dark at 4.30. Right. You I, know? I was going to ask about that because so, I mentioned Alaska on the last show. and like, well, th they have no sun going down in one part <laughs> mm -hmm. of the year and then and the, other, the other half of the year it's dark. It's dark most of Good the time. Good point. Yeah. You mentioned Hot Dog Day, Janine, and, and this year, as I know you were there and familiar yeah. with the event, it's so successful, but this year they exceeded their fundraising goal. I think they've raised more than they have in the past, and that is just fantastic. It's really an example of the community coming together for a great cause, mm -hmm. and that helps you, right? Yeah, it certainly does. And they raised this year. They raised thirteen over thirteen thousand wow. dollars. So I think um, in one day, in and one day, amazing. all those hot dogs. Uh, so I think um, the event has raised. I want to say over forty five thousand dollars over the past several years that the event has been happening. And uh, you're absolutely right. Events like the longest day, and specifically um, the hot dog event in Merrimack, which is very successful. Um, those fundraising efforts allow us at the Alzheimer's Association to offer our programs and services at no cost Amazing. to families mm -hmm. and people living with the disease. So we are so grateful. We're grateful to you for showing up and getting your hot dogs. We're yeah. grateful for uh, people participating in our walks to end Alzheimer's and our, our other revenue-driven events because not only do they raise money uh, um, so that we can continue doing what we do, but they also raise a lot of awareness. That's fantastic. Now, I missed this year because I was in Alaska having an even longer day. <laughs> yeah. The sun didn't go down, but... Uh, and you were missed I, there. Thank you. I, I really miss going because it's like old home day, too, because everybody sure. comes out. I see all these people I haven't... Some people I only see once a year once at a Hot year, Dog I Day. Really, they had a drive through but this year, I, too. I was yeah. going to mention that. Thank you. Um, and the governor came and he signed a bill, and you're holding it. What was that bill all about? He did. That was a very exciting piece of this year's Hot Dog Day was uh, the bill that Governor Sununu ceremonially signed. It was Senate Bill 414. And it's sponsored by Senator Kevin Avard. His district includes part of Nashua and Hollis. Great state senator, by the way. He chairs the Natural Resources Committee in the Senate, which Merrimack has a lot of uh, bills in front of because of our environmental and water sure. issues. And Kevin does mm -hmm. a fantastic job. Oh, and he, I love Kevin. We were freshman representatives together before he was a senator, and he always had a bag of candy with him. We called him the candy man. 
And oh. he's been on the show before, um, but I haven't had him on in a while. He's supposed to be here today, but he right. couldn't make it. Yeah. Um, he also sings and plays guitar, so we call him the singing senator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this was the singing senator's bill. That's right. And he's the lead sponsor on this of several senators. Uh, so this was a very popular bill. But um, to just sort of give a summary of what the bill does, it broadens in New Hampshire law the definition of Alzheimer's. And this is very important. It's important because certain criteria to have Alzheimer's is needed for eligibility for respite programs for caregivers, Correct. which I want to talk more about on the show too. So this bill, uh, not a very long bill, as you and your viewers can see, it's very small but very powerful because it uh, broadens it to not only have Alzheimer's, but to also demonstrate symptoms of Alzheimer's without necessarily having the diagnosis or a similar irreversible dementia to an extent, extent such symptoms interfere with activities of daily living. So this broadening of the definition of Alzheimer's in New Hampshire law allows participation by more families who are taking care of their loved ones to participate in greatly needed respite programs for caregivers. Win-win. Now, Janine, as you and I know, it is not easy to pass a bill into law. Several hurdles have to be uh, jumped, and also you have to have the cooperation of many others to pass these bills. But this bill, Senate Bill 414, to broaden that definition, passed through the House on a vo voice vote, passed the House Committee, Health, Human Services, and Elderly Affairs, 21 to nothing, passed in the Senate on a voice vote. It was signed into law on May 20th by Governor Sununu, but the ceremonial signing, once again, was right here, just next door in Merrimack at Hot Dog Day on June 30th. Huge success all around, but mostly for the families of those exactly. caring for their loved ones. Huge win. Well, those respite programs go right along with resources and care. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so one of the respite um, opportunities that uh, this will help with is um, the uh, respite, the Alzheimer's respite grant that is vetted through um, Service Link. It's provided um, through the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, but previously, you ha again, like you mentioned, you, you had to have a diagnosis. And there are so many families and people living with the disease that are in the are having significant symptoms that are impacting their functioning, but are are in the process of obtaining a diagnosis or maybe don't have access to sure. um, to obtain an accurate diagnosis. And so we were seeing a lot of families in need not be able to obtain um, specific services that they really would have benefited from. So on the last show, we said you said there was 26,000 known cases in New Hampshire. Correct. But I think it's higher because I think, I, I, know, I know people that show the signs, but they're not diagnosed. Oh yeah, there, there are many, many people who go undiagnosed, uh, and that can be for a lot of reasons. That, because, that could be because of access to um, a medical facility or brain imaging that would allow for an accurate diagnosis. That could be, it could be because of the stigma associated with the disease, the person, the patient, and or their family may not want to know. Um, so there, there are a lot of factors. I know. Now, right. speaking of caregivers, um, caregivers require an incredible amount of support, advice, and resources. And patience. patience. And patience, absolutely. It is a huge undertaking and certainly not one to be overlooked. Are there resources for caregivers in this region, and what are those, and where would a caregiver uh, go to get those resources? That's, that's great. And so I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Alzheimer's Association, of course, as one of many resources. Okay. Uh, we have an office in Bedford and we serve the entire state of New Hampshire. Um, we do offer programs and services. I mentioned our, our helpline, our 24 seven helpline that's available to assist families. Uh, and we offer education programs, support groups, and there's a variety of education programs and support groups and our advocacy efforts and um, promotion of research and so forth. Um, so we can certainly help families that um, 
you know, that are impacted by this, but we're not the only sort of game in town, I like to say. We work really closely with other agencies. For instance, ServiceLink. Okay. ServiceLink has mm -hmm. offices in every county in New mm -hmm. Hampshire, um, and they uh, are really skilled at sort of facilitating um, the statewide programs that are available, for instance, that Alzheimer's respite grant, and they can um, work with families in a slightly different way than we do. I think we can really help with, with emotional support and education and referring out to resources in the community. And, but I think ServiceLink does a great job of being able to provide um, information and referral for things that we may not be the experts at. So we can, you know, what we do can really extend all the good work that other agencies are doing. That's fantastic. Now, you mentioned respite grant, but um, how else is all of this funded? All of our programs and services, or mm -hmm. how does ServiceLink? Uh, everything. Uh, who's, who's funding all this? So for the Alzheimer's Association, um, our events like the Longest the Day dogs, yes. and our, our Walks to End Alzheimer's and our other revenue-driven events specifically provide um, the most amount of our funding that allows us to uh, you know, our overhead costs or our operational costs. We do have some grant funding that funds um, diverse outreach or phys physicians outreach or special programs um, and things like that. But the vast majority of all of our funding is, is through our events and through don donations and sponsors and so forth. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? And you can donate online, for example, and there are pages for those that are helping out. Yep. And uh, you can donate to their team and the like, and all for a good cause, and you may get right. the get mug, mug and the I know. beach towel. Yeah, and we have our up upcoming Walks to End Alzheimer's, and that website will be um, available to you. It should be showing on your screen right now or shortly. It is. And so uh, so we encourage you to, to come join us uh, and create a, a walk team or join a friend or family member's team. And the walk in Manchester, New Hampshire, will take place on September 24th okay. um, at the uh, Delta Dental Stadium in Manchester. September 24th. Is it a walk run or just walk? Just a walk. There's two different routes. One is shorter and one is longer. I want to say the shorter one is, is probably a mile or a little bit less and the longer one is two and a half miles I think okay. uh, roughly and so that provides an opportunity for someone who has less mobility to be able to participate. Um, they're wheelchair friendly um, so if someone say um, has quite a few mobility issues, you know, sure. their, their care provider can um, can can walk with them. Yeah, it was part of the torch run this year, and um, I was with a girl from Merrimack who's in a wheelchair, and uh, she she did a great job holding that, holding the torch and, and uh, maneuvering her wheelchair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Sometimes people ask if dogs are welcome, you know, at walkathons. Yeah. And the answer would be good. yes. Okay. Yes, yes. we doggies. have we have doggy bandanas and we oh. have all kinds oh. of fun stuff. We we encourage you to bring your your um, you know canine friends and um, it's beautiful to see you know the fun things little purple tutus they put their their dogs in and oh, wow. um, just uh, purple lays and you know all kinds of fun stuff so it's really great. It just kind of kicks up the energy quite a bit and um, we just we have a lot of fun. September 24th, is that a, a Saturday? Or it is a Saturday. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't have a calendar in front of me. I'll be there. I want yeah. you to be there. I think oh, great to know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That sounds great. And we saw like you put a lot of planning and time into it, too, to think of tutus or bandanas and everything else. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every aspect. And yeah. and I have to give credit to that, uh, to those types of events, to my to my colleague, Maria. She manages all of our walks. I'm a supportive person for that. I oversee all of our programmatic work and our clinical work with families and building partnerships and things like that. Yeah. Um, but Maria is really the expert when it comes to our events and fundraising. So it's on the screen on how to sign up? Yes. Okay. The well, I can't see the screen, but yeah. the website. Yeah. So what is the website? I'll write it down here. Um, the website is, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to mess it up because I gave, I'll my, get, I'll get I gave the, the website away. Um, okay. There's several different websites. Um, but if you look at the website that is scrolling across your screen, that is the website that will take you specifically to the walk opportunities in our chapter locally. So say you met a brand new donor who approached you and said, you know, here's my uh, $20 or $50 or $5,000. Sure. Uh, what would you say to a brand new donor about where their money goes and who it affects and how important it is that they contribute? Good question. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, what I would say is that their donation is going to support the work of the Alzheimer's Association as it relates to people living with the disease, mm -hmm. um, caregivers, um, professionals, um, outreach, and it's going to make a difference not only today but in years to come because it, it, it um, over time, you know, all of those donations build up and we're really able to expand and advance the work that we're doing. So important, that's great. I'm looking forward to um, the hot dog days in Merrimack uh, exceeding the, the million dollar mark. Ooh. Oh. oh, he's almost halfway there. That's amazing. Yeah. Or a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars? You said a million. <laughs> I was like, I would be very impressed, <laughs> Janine. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's always halfway there for $100,000. Either $100, one would be impressive. I know. Yeah, I I'm know impressed with very, very impressed. I should get my brain examined. <laughs> You're fine. Hey, we can set the goal at a million. I know. Well, I'm thinking, uh, well, you know, I used to work for a company. This is why I said a million. Um, elite fitness professionals. I was. I know a lot of people in town from the gym because I used to teach there. Um, and it was required that we um, volunteer to help St. Jude's Research Hospital. Mm. Oh, yeah. So that every year there was a big fundraiser, and we reached the million-dollar mark, with, I mean, within a few years. That's awesome. amazing. So that's where the million came from. Yeah. So I didn't, I really didn't do too poorly. I just, once you learn how my brain works, it's <laughs> a little different from other You're fine. People. My yeah. husband kn knows me well enough, like, he used to, try and figure out how did you get from that to here but now he knows me he's like okay <laughs> so is there any upcoming legislation or any issues as we start almost begin a new term in a matter of months that we should be aware of or that um, may be discussed or anything like that yeah that's a great question and i will say that um because uh everything's out of session yeah. at the moment, yeah. um, that right now our advocacy team at the Alzheimer's Association locally is figuring out what their priorities will be sure, understandable. Uh, for, for the upcoming months. But um, The filing period isn't until a month and then even a couple months from then, sure. so plenty of time. Right, January is when they but, get back into session. Yeah, but congratulations to the association on this piece of legislation sponsored by Senator Avard because yeah. I'll tell yeah, you, it I sailed through and everyone was on board and it makes a whole lot of sense and it helps a lot of families, so this is just fantastic. And there was actually one person, um, Ginny, who was volunteering at Hot Dog Day, who stated that she was able to get one of those respite grants. Oh, no kidding! Because yeah. of the expanded definition, and so I thought it was really. And she talked to to um, the governor about it, and okay. I think it was it really hit home the personal impact oh, yes. that some of these changes can make. Um, so. I got to give a shout out to three of my friends on here, Representative John Burt, who's not running for re-election of Goffstown, Representative Keith Ammon, awesome, please re-elect him if you see this show and where does he live, Milford, some yes. of that area, and then Representative Hunt. So they were also co-sponsors of this. And, and Rep Burt, as I, I was kind of surprised to see his name here. But. He's usually all about the Second Amendment, and I don't see his <laughs> name on other things. <laughs> Well, it's a bipartisan issue, Alzheimer's disease. Right, it disease. is, it you know, is. We, yeah. we don't, yeah. You know, what we say is it's a purple issue, it's not a red issue. It or, is a purple issue, and we're a purple know? state, and yeah. we have a purple you background know, today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the sponsors of this bill and the support for it really hit that point home because it's everyone all was over. on board. It, that's, uh, the names on this list are all across the spectrum. That's yeah. right, mm -hmm. all on board, and it sailed through, so congratulations. Well done. No, thank you for all the support. Um, we couldn't have done it without the support from. Yeah, you know the governor them. stayed at Hot Dog Day for a couple of hours, Quite as a I long recall. Time. Yes, and that so was the great. story that you mentioned, he heard a firsthand story about from a caregiver. Who, I'm sure he heard quite a few others, which mm -hmm. is fantastic that he spent that time to listen to that. This is a very important issue mm -hmm. to him. It In is. fact, I had heard it was his idea to sign this bill ceremonially at the Merrimack Hot Dog Day. So it's very near and dear to his heart, it and is. you're good mm -hmm. to have a friend in uh, Governor Sununu on this issue. Yeah, right. I, well, last year when I was there, I, I always see the ladies that used to take my aqua class there. They're, for a while, they were called the water babes, and they, <laughs> they're probably in the Red Hat Society. I don't know what they're doing now, but I, they're some of the people that I always see on Hot Dog Day. Yeah. And uh, they were very excited to like to meet. I mean, it is cool to meet a governor. I mean, for us, it's like old hat, like, oh, yeah, you know, you know <laughs> we know him. But um, not that's not true for everybody. It's like 
it's a big deal to meet a governor. Yeah. Yeah, very big so, deal. And yes. he did take time to, to speak with he was them. There for yeah. a long time. And to be at a ceremonial bill signing. Uh, you know, we've been to very few uh, in our terms in terms right. of being uh, legislators. It doesn't happen too often. Not every bill gets such no. a special I mean, signing. I, it took me 12 years to get a ceremonial <laughs> signing for one of my bills, and it's actually on my my literature this year because I'm. I picked up that boot, that pen that he signed it with. I said, "Yes, it took 12 years." And so when you took the picture, <laughs> right? I have it. So I need to write a little note because someday somebody's going to wonder why do you have this pen in here? Why are you saving this? Because he signed my bill. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. So very true. Exactly. So that was great. It all mm -hmm. came together so nicely this year. Uh, just a couple other things that I'd like to share with your audience is, is that there are, I think in New Hampshire, um, we forget how many caregiver supports are out there. So I want to encourage um, caregivers to reach out to places like the Veterans Administration okay. and um, their local senior centers. And I already mentioned before, Service Link, Easter Seals, um, trying to think of some other ones. Um, Adult day health programs are a great resource for respite. So an, adult, an adult day health program. Adult day health. Okay. Adult day health programs are a place where a person with memory loss or another um, disability okay. uh, can go for um, a, a several hours. It varies from, from sort of center to center. Um, but many of them are social models. So a person would go and have activities um, to keep them engaged, which is good for their brain. Um, they're among peers, so they don't have to, you know, they're all kind of at the same level and doing activities that are appropriate for right. where they are cognitively. Sure. Um, but fiscally, it, it's a lot more efficient than having in-home help. If someone can afford in-home help, in-home care, that's great, and a lot of people would prefer that. Mm -hmm. um, but so uh, right it's now it's 25 to $30 an hour for someone to come in and provide care, okay. whereas it might be $70 for your loved one to go for six hours to an adult day health program. I see. So it's gonna cost a lot less money, and frankly, there, there are a lot of benefits to being around other people, and uh, you know the socialization, the mental engagement, Right, um, if cool. someone has memory loss and they're not remembering to eat lunch yeah. while they eat, eat a congregate meal there or they have snacks or they may even have um, a nurse there in case the person isn't feeling well and a lot of them have transportation to these programs so uh, and the the VA covers for qualified veterans will cover the cost of an adult day health program Wow isn't that worth so, its weight in gold absolutely so I just I mentioned that because um, there are a lot more charities and programs than I think, you know, we would we would realize outwardly. So, so. good to know because again it is a widespread um, issue. And we have the second oldest uh, state in the country. Maine is first, New Hampshire is second, and Vermont is third. I always joke we must have something in the water up here in, yeah. in northern oh, New oh, England. In but <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe that's not the place to say it in Merrimack, but um, we just have we have a, a growing aging population yeah. here in New Hampshire and we need to really get on top of it and get in front of it mm -hmm. um, because it costs a lot more money to do otherwise. You mm -hmm. know, it's going to cost a lot less money to to put some preventative measures in place, more caregiver supports so that caregivers and people living with the disease don't have to be so dependent mm -hmm. on state programs. Absolutely. So I think I missed one of those when you went through um, care places. Sure. Uh, Veterans Administration, Senior Centers, Easter Seals, Adult Day Care, Adult Daycare Health. Yeah, Something adult day health centers. Adult day health. Yeah. And then there was one more that you mentioned. Um, well, I think I, I mentioned Service Link again, but Service I think. Service Link, that yeah. Was it. Service mm -hmm. Link is a great East. Oh, and you, you already got Easter yeah. Seals. Um, so, yeah, and, and one other thing too is, you know, if someone calls our helpline or visits our website, we can run through the gamut, you know, whatever's appropriate for that person or their family. We can go through which of, you know, what makes sense for them and provide short term and long term you know, goals and priorities yeah. and really help them. Mm -hmm. I do have one thought. We talked in the earlier edition, the show, about uh, the average age of somebody with Alzheimer's, but is there an average age for a caregiver and are these programs open to any age? For example, if you have a grandchild who would be interested or uh, wanting to help out more at home, could they find the resources they need? as well as a uh, baby boomer generation who may be dealing with older parents at this particular moment. 
I think that's a great question, and I think, uh, to my knowledge, there is no age restriction. Okay. I mean, I'm sure you have to, I, I would think that you would have to be an adult over the age of 18. Sure. But a lot of the programs um, are, a person would qualify, the patient themselves have to qualify, um, and the caregiver would get a, a benefit for that program necessarily, you know, um, mm -hmm. presumably. Yeah. So, but I, I yeah, any primary caregiver or um, can can benefit from a lot of these programs. Sure. Okay, I think this, we only have time for one more question, but uh, do you ever have like animals, like dogs, puppies, as part of yeah. the care to help these these people? Yeah, pet therapy is a great resource mm -hmm. um, and is extremely beneficial for people with memory loss, whether it's a live animal or now they have um, animatronic animals that you can actually purchase on, say, Amazon, and it's basically, you know, a fake animal that might purr or, or might- What about stuffed animals? stuffed animals or baby dolls, um, you know, whatever resonates and provides comfort and security mm -hmm. for the person with memory loss. If someone was a homemaker and they have a large family, that's probably what they're gonna resonate towards. Um, you know, older memories of raising their children. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, a doll might work really well for them. Um, if someone had dogs their whole life, you know, yeah. having um, a stuffed animal or um, another means of We used to put on contact. the channel like TLC or something that shows babies because my mother, my, yeah, I, yeah. I, I get it from my mother. I love, love babies. Every yeah. single baby I see, I want to keep it. Just, just put that on for me when I get old and I lose my mind. Just put on babies for me and I'll be happy. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but she she would just watch it. Oh, look at that one. She just <laughs> love all the yeah. babies. Yeah. So um, I can't we're out of time. It just went by so fast. So yeah. we've taped four shows now on Alzheimer's. And if you can think of any other thing topic that we haven't covered, that deals with Alzheimer's, let me know and you can come back anytime. Thank you. Thank I you. really appreciate it. It was so nice to and be here with you as well. Oh, and thanks for all you do and all the members of the thank association you. and all donors and caregivers to, to help out here. Yeah, thank you very much for all your support as well. And thank you for watching Chatting with Janine and I'll be back with some new shows as soon as I can.